In this tutorial, uh, I want to highlight why sometimes, uh, most of the time, people having a uh, VPS or virtual private servers uh, needs uh, a Tomcat server. Uh, because for resellers, uh, clients um, may seek uh, deploying uh, Java based applications or Java web applications. Uh, and uh, this is uh, the main uh, thing about Tomcat that you need to deploy Java applications and spe uh, specifically we're talking about WAR files or the web application archives, uh, Java uh, server pages, JSP documents and so on. The Apache HTTP server on its own is it cannot uh, provide uh, this functionality. So we need another server uh, that is integrated with the, H the, Apache, uh, the Apache HTTP server in the same time. But let's this is the the, 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 the most important things we have to know why you need a Tomcat server. A Java driven web application server and as you can see here it's the tomcat.apache.org um, why uh, provide support for Java web applications like Java server pages documents war like web application archive files and it's a self-contained HTTP server this is very important for you to take a look at to understand how things are uh, working because it's it's a high level uh, view uh, of the Apache web server and the Tomcat server to uh, understand. This is important because uh, this high level view is very important for you if you are a developer or if you are a reseller whether you are developing Java based applications or uh, you are troubleshooting some uh, of the cPanel uh, errors uh, that might uh, that you might encounter uh, through the course uh, of your service as you can see here this is the Apache the, J the Apache web server uh, and the Apache web server, the normal thing that comes with the cPanel is not able to interface with the Java virtual machine that we need to, in order to communicate uh, uh, with Java applications. You can draw your application downward here, but as you can see, that the Apache web server is not capable on its own uh, this is the browser client, so the, the browser client directly interfaces with the Apache web server. The Apache web server is an HTTP server, and it's not a servlet server or um, as the, it's called. Tomcat server is called a servlet uh, server. And as you can see, we need the Tomcat server. Normally, the client is able to access, uh, as you will see later on the Tomcat server uh, or the browser client, you can access the Tomcat server directly by using the port 8080. So if you just write your text IP or uh, your web domain uh, here and you write 8080, you'll be accessing the Tomcat server. What if the browser client uh, is uh, having a Java application that needs to access some Java applications that's hosted uh, by you. So you need Tomcat server that is able to access the Java virtual machine. Now, as you can see, this is the Apache that is already being deployed, and there are two connectors because we want the data uh, possibly uh, on the Apache or the Tomcat server uh, can be uh, cross-referenced by each of these servers instead of having them isolated. 
So there is a connector at port 8009 and this connector is responsible for managing the uh, communications between the Tomcat server and the Apache server. Uh, and there is module, a module uh, called module JK or module Jakarta and this module is responsible for handling the, connect, the connection requests between the, the Tomcat server from the Tomcat server there is the connector where the connections go through port 8009 and we need this module Jakarta module and that will be interfacing by the Apache web server and then uh, to uh, the browser, to the client browser or the, our customer's browser client. This overall or the high level view of the Tomcat server is very important to know how things are uh, put together uh, to serve uh, the functionality uh, that most of us uh, require uh, nowadays. Thank you for your time.